news. Now, there is a lot happening today, but let's start off with what is going on with the economy. And we can see that more and more corporations, they're laying off individuals. And when I see something like this, and we see a lot of retail stores closing, a lot of corporations saying, oh, we're going to go through restructuring. We just don't have the profits and we're going to let some people go. This reminds me of 2007 going into 2008, where there were a lot of corporations laying off people. It was very quiet at that point in time, but it was happening. They didn't really televise it until the stock market fell down uh, and, I mean, crashed and corporations were like, whoa, hey, now we can announce how many people we're going to really lay off. And we saw company after company just letting people go. And we're going to see the same thing. But up until that period of time, they were laying off individuals very quietly, very slowly, and they were giving reasons of why they were doing this. We're seeing that time right now, they're going to be cutting another 300 jobs because they have falling circulation, sales, they're not coming in like they used to, revenue is not coming in, Toys R Us, they are in trouble, net sales plunged by $113 million, and we received the retail numbers. And remember how they calculate these retail numbers over time. Remember when stores shut down and they close and they go bankrupt and the stores just don't exist anymore, they don't say, okay, let's cut it off, they made no sales. No, they calculate it out for the rest of the year to give us this slow slide to make it look like things aren't really happening and it's not that bad. But we can see that retail sales, they have tumbled by 0.3% month on month. This is the biggest drop since 2016. Now let's take a closer look at what is happening here. We see retail and food services, they are down negative 0.3%. Motor vehicle is down negative 0.2%. We see electronics and appliance stores down negative 2.8%. Gasoline stations down negative 2.4%. Sporting goods, hobbies, books, music stores down negative 0.6%. General merchandise stores, department stores down negative 0.3% and department stores negative 1%. Miscellaneous stores negative 1.3%. And we can see this is absolutely awful there is nothing good here whatsoever and this is going to continue throughout this year and it has been continuing since we've been reporting it year after year and after year and like i said where everyone thought oh after the holiday season it's going to be fantastic no it never happens we are in this trajectory of a downward spiral this is the retail apocalypse. This is the economic collapse apocalypse. This is what we're seeing right now. This is the lead up to the big one. And it's all falling apart. GM right now will extend the typical summer shutdown at many of their U.S. factories around the country. Why? Because of slumping sales, bloated inventory. Their hot streak has basically come to an end and we can see that GM's auto inventory in dealerships it's continually moving up and up and up their channel stuffing we know how this works we discussed it many times before and we see GM once again is in big trouble so when we take all of this information and we take it and we look at it we can see that the second quarter gdp well that is in trouble this is falling like you've never seen before even though the atlanta fed the new york fed they're estimating that gdp is going to be around four percent you know 3.2 percent this is absolutely ridiculous because when we look at the hard data what's really going on in the economy, we can see that it is just completely falling apart. I mean, there is not one piece of good economic data coming out, and I'm not talking about the stock market at all. What we're looking at is what is really going on. And remember, the GDP, 70%, is made up of consumer spending. And you have to remember, in that consumer spending, there is health care, the Affordable Care Act. And we need to remember something very important. 
around 2 million people or so, well, they dropped out of it. So they're, they won't be spending those insurance premiums every month. So that is also going to leave the second quarter GDP numbers. And it's going to show that consumer spending is even lower than they're actually reporting now. So the whole thing is going to be a complete disaster. And when we look at April business inventories, they tumble by 0.2% in April. And this is the biggest drop since November of 2015. And this does not help the second quarter GDP. GDP. Inventories to sales stagnated in April and they remain in recession signaling mode. And again, what we're seeing is this huge collapse of the system. Actually, Bundesbank's Weedman, he's out there saying that we're approaching another crisis. And he's looking at it and he's saying that we have one of the biggest asset bubbles in history. And this is the head of the German Central Bank. So think about what he's saying here. We have this huge asset bubble. It's the biggest one he's ever seen. And he's saying it's going to pop and the whole thing's going to implode on itself. Now, he did say something which was very interesting. He said the culprit might be digital currencies such as Bitcoin because this could worsen the next financial crisis. And this is a very interesting thing to say because right now many people don't even have Bitcoin. And we can see that what they're worried about is that when this system comes down, what they're worried about is people piling into a crypto currency. Remember, it's not regulated. The central bank does not control it. It's decentralized and basically it's an open market and you can see by the way it's moving up and down naturally they're not controlling it in any way and they're worried that people when the system comes down people will pour out of dollars and they'll go into the crypto market and what he's saying is if people do do this and not just the dollar but the euro and all the other currencies around the world they're saying that it will destroy the system and that will be the culprit of the destruction of the system that we see today well i'm looking at the cryptocurrency as you know people are upset about the dollar they're upset about the way the economies are run they're upset about the central banks and people are using the cryptocurrency to move their assets now, people are also putting that into silver and gold, which is very important. But we know that silver and gold right now are manipulated. And what is happening right now is that the U.S. government, they're taking a look at this and they submitted a new bill and it was introduced on the floor of the U.S. Senate entitled Combating Money Laundering, Terrorist Financing and Counterfeiting Act of 2017. And you know that this is not what it's about. Now, in there, they're saying cash is evil, Bitcoin is evil, and they're also saying pre-made, prepaid mobile phones, retail gift vouchers, even electronic coupons, they're all evil because they don't want your funds going into other places. They want it where? In the bank, in digital form, period. And we can see right now that in this bill, they basically said, something about Bitcoin. And you can tell from the bill and the, and the language in the bill, they have really no idea how Bitcoin works. Remember, there's no central bank for Bitcoin. There's no chairman of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is created through software. It's decentralized. So the Senate is trying to force the Bitcoin core software to comply with money laundering regulations. The bill also attempts to drop a major bomb on Bitcoin by including it in the list of monetary instruments that must be reported when entering or leaving the U.S. So theoretically, if you leave the U.S. with more than 10,000 in Bitcoin or Ethereum, you'd have to confess this fact to the authorities or otherwise face penalties, prison time or anything else they can think of. 
So this bill is nothing more than another weapon in their ongoing war on cash, and now they included cryptocurrencies. They're very worried about this. Now, today the Fed came out and they did exactly what we thought they were going to do. They raised the interest rates by 25 basis points. And when they looked at it, they said, well, the data looks fantastic. Unemployment is fantastic. The consumer is doing very, very well. The housing market is doing well. We see very low inflation. Now, we've been looking at all the data, we've been looking at all the information, and we know that this is not true at all. Actually, if we go back just a year ago, the economic data that we've been looking at is worse than ever. Think about those individuals that were looking at the subprime securities, and if you've seen The Big Short, uh, you would know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen The Big Short, see that movie. They looked inside and they said, well, wait a minute. These are rated AAA, but there's all these individuals that are defaulting on the loans. How could these be AAA rated? It, it makes no sense. Now, they looked at this, and they knew that they weren't, so they bet against them. It took years before they were able to cash in on this. People laughed at them and things like that, but we've been looking at the data. We've been looking inside, and we're saying, this doesn't make sense. The economy is at full employment, like they're telling us. They're convincing us there's no inflation. And we're scratching our heads saying, well, if that is true, why are all these corporations laying off? Why is there's no real revenue? Why aren't there sales? Why are all these stores closing? It's not going to the online market. What's happening here? And we understand what is happening. That just like those subprime security individuals that were looking inside of those securities, we realize this is fake. And what is happening here is that the Fed came out and they said, we're accelerating the process. We realize that this economy is ripping itself apart. We know it's collapsing. We know it's not doing well. And we're very nervous that there's going to be some type of black swan. We want to control the narrative. And I think, and I still think, if they have their way, they're going to try to bring down this economy and they're going to try to do it in two parts. The first part, if they can control the narrative, they're going to blame this on Trump and say he's the one who caused all of this. And once they then start creating more stimulus, trying to pump up the system, well, I don't think the rest of the world is going to look at this and say, well, we still trust you. No, they're going to say, mm, we, we saw how this worked last time and we don't know if we can really trust all this, but we know at this point, the stimulus that they create, it's not going to do that much. They might even throw in universal basic income to get people spending in the retail market. And we know that this will only last for a short period of time. And this is why if they can control the narrative, they will then have some type of an event, um, some type of cyber attack where it hits the financial institutions, a regional power grid, um, outage and this way they can start the whole thing saying listen it wasn't us we tried to bring it back up trump brought it down and now we have this other country or group that is really hitting the system and brought it down once again now if trump has the narrative he's going to try to maneuver this in a way where it's not blamed on any group or country it's going to be blamed on the elite the deep state and the central bank and this is what he's been trying to do and he's trying to shift everything in his direction to try to control the narrative. And this is where the battle is right now. Now, something very interesting, which I never thought I'd hear, but Susie Orman was talking about the last recession. And she was talking to people, explaining them that, hey, we had this last recession. It was terrible. People lost their jobs. And you need to be ready and prepared just in case this happens again. Now, the central bank is out there. The corporate media is out there. They're all telling you how great the economy is. They've been telling us that we've been in this recovery. And she's telling people that they should put away their funds. Keep it because we might be entering another type of 
economic situation. She said, this world is crazy and things happen in a crazy world. And she also said, the only way you can take the craziness out is to make yourself secure. Now, she talked about losing your job. She talked about actually prepping and getting prepared for another crisis, which I find very interesting at this stage of the game. Because as we can see, Obama handed off a healthy economy to Trump. And since that time, they've been saying that the economy was doing fine. We do see rumblings now that the economy is not doing as great as it was before. And of course, this is the lead up to blame Trump. The Fed is out there telling you how great it is. They're raising rates. And something we need to understand is that when the Fed raises their rates during a weakened stage of the economy where it never re recovered, this is an illusion. What happens is, and this is according to Bank of America, where they've done this research and they notice that every time the Fed is determined to tighten, it usually ends in an event. And they started to point it out on their graph where they looked at all different times, 1982, 1987, 1990, 2000, 2007. And they said, here we are right now. And if you noticed, if you look at the graph, you can see that each time they tightened, they could never bring the interest rate up to the last point. It got lower and lower. Let me give you an example. Back in 1987, the interest rates were around 6% or so. They started to move the interest rates up. When they reached around 9% or so, the economy came down. Back in the 90s, the interest rates were around 2% or so. They brought them up to around 6% the economy came down. 2000, the same thing. 2007, the interest rates started at 1.5%. They were able to bring it up to around 4.5%. or 5 And then all of a sudden, the economy came down. Here we are at very close to 0%. And they're bringing the rates up and it's at 1.25%. And I don't think we're going to get any higher than that before the entire system comes down. Maybe they'll have one more, but we can see already from the last one, the economy is accelerating to the downside. We're seeing loan creation. It is stalled. It is declining. We see the credit impulse. It has gone deep into the negative territory. These are all the signs that are showing us that this whole thing is about to collapse. The clock is ticking down. Get prepared, get ready, because with a wink of an eye, one day you can be waking up and all of a sudden you hear the stock market is down by 2,000 points. People are scrambling, people are nervous, and you see it drop and drop and they throw the switch and they stop the market from going down. And all of a sudden you see corporations laying off left and right and Everyone is panicking panicking at this point. Most likely, this will happen on a Friday. So we need to keep our eyes open and we can see we're heading down this path and we are very close for this system 